Hey, and here we are back again. Sorry I haven't had a chance to film all the solutions. Uh, this is not the only thing I do. My full-time job is tutoring and teaching the AMC 10, basically, or, you know, precursors to it, you know, math counts or AMC 8 or various other things that are basically reasoning type of math, creative problem solving. So I do that more than full-time. I'm working seven days a week, about eight or nine hours a day. Uh, so I don't always have time to film, or I try to respond to your guys' comments as quickly as possible, and emails as well. I just ask for patience so that when I get a chance to get to them, I will. But I also have, you know, family and things like that that I need to spend time with as well. So uh, if you're interested in tutoring, you can reach me at the email on my About channel, or uh, in the About page of my channel. I wanted to go over this question, though, because I was in session recently with a student who's preparing for AMC 12, and we were doing this question, and I actually hadn't yet solved it. I hadn't had time. And so I was exploring the question with them, and I want to go over it with you so you can see the method that I used and how it developed. Suppose that on a parabola with vertex V and focus F, there exists a point A such that this distance, this distance, what is the sum of all possible values of the length FV? First things first, the sum of all possible values, viettas, instantly. Think of viettas. Be prepared to use viettas formulas. If you don't know these, they're on the test almost every year in some capacity. So keep that in mind. It's an absolute must-know concept. Okay, so then we're looking for something like that. They've talked about a focus. When you learn basic parabola concepts like ax squared plus bx plus c or even the vertex form, you typically don't discuss the vertex, uh, or the, the focus rather, because it doesn't come up until you get to conic sections. Uh, conic sections is covered in late algebra two usually, at second semester, um, or it could be uh, second semester pre-calc honors or regular pre-calc as well. And so that, keep that in mind, the focus F implies that we're doing something with conic sections, in which case these two are probably not gonna be used. So next thing we're gonna do then, uh, you're priming yourself to prepare for that moment, go ahead and try and draw what this looks like. So I've got some kind of parabola going like this, right? And the focus, I will put it up here so we have enough space to work. And so the vertex will be down here. I will call the distance to the vertex x. So now, again, back to the sum of all possible values of the length fv, we want the sum of all possible values of x. Okay, that simplifies the process later on. And so we're going to draw to a random point over here, say at this point here. We'll call that point A because that's what they call it. And a point A where this distance is 20 and the distance down to V is 21. Very close, 2021. They love the, the year combination there. So the thing is, I tried a few things because my first time solving the problem, I spent probably a minute, minute and a half maybe trying to like do stuff with this. Oh, by the way, I put the, the parabola's vertex at the origin because it doesn't matter. They don't give us an equation of any kind. And you can move this wherever you want in the plane. It will always be true for all such equations. So why not put it at the origin? That's going to make your life easier and it's not going to change the answer in the end. So then if we do that, I thought, okay, what if I made h and k zero vertex form, then I would have my parabola is y equals ax squared. And the whole point of this was a is a point on the parabola. So if I was to say call the x value of this c, we don't want to call it x because that's already in use, this distance here would be c. And I thought, okay, I could plug the c into this equation and get a c squared. And I thought, how can I use that? Eh, you can't really. Maybe you could. Maybe somebody else did it that way and had some success. But then I said, okay, look, you're probably overcomplicating this. We said at the beginning, it's going to involve concepts that you learn when you learn conic sections. And so as such, we need to walk back down memory lane and ask ourselves, what is the definition of a parabola as it pertains to conic sections? So I've got here a handy dandy pre-calc textbook. This is the one the local high schools use, and I actually happen to like it. Um, if you're looking to preview pre-calc on your own, I think this is a great text by which to do it. It's Sullivan and Sullivan um, pre-calculus. This is the fourth edition. I have the instructor's edition so I can see all the answers and not have to calculate everything. And I'm going to show you the definition here. I'm going to hold it up to the camera, try and hold my hand steady, but I had some caffeine. So it says, a parabola is the collection of points, P, in the plane 
that are the same distance from a fixed point F as they are from a line D. The point F is called the focus and the line uh, and the, of the parabola and the line D is called the directrix. Okay, so let's summarize what we just learned. There is a line that is going to be actually behind the vertex on the other side away from the focus. If you, you'll learn about this when you learn conic sections. Look it up on Khan Academy if you want. Um, so this distance here is the distance coming down here. So the, the directrix would pass kind of like this. It'll be perpendicular to the axis of symmetry. And so this directrix, we don't know its equation because we don't know the equation of our parabola in the first place. But the point is that the distance from any point on the directrix straight to the parabola, and by the way, if I went over to here, for instance, the distance is always perpendicular to a line. It's always perpendicular. You never measure the distance this way, right? And so then if I drew from F over to there, whatever that distance was, this distance is equal to it. That is the definition of a parabola. And since that's the definition when you're talking about conic sections especially, uh, we should probably be thinking, how can I incorporate that into my answer? And if you're not thinking that, then you're failing at this problem, at least. And so what you need to do is get back into focus on, on, what's, going, on what's going on here. The focus F, this point A is on the parabola, which means the distance from F to A is the same as if I drop straight down perpendicular to here. This distance must be 20 also. Ignore that it's not drawn to scale. It's just whatever. I'm not a computer here, right? So uh, we don't really need this ordered pair. That's irrelevant. All of this was just stuff we don't want to do. It's dead ends, right? False paths, I call them. And it's okay to take false paths. Real problem solving is not clean. I go from here to here to here to here and I'm done. Maybe on easy problems. But on the difficult ones, you're going to have false paths. That's not to be alarmed by. That's normal, right? And then after you get to the dead end, like, I can't really use that, back to the drawing board. Try a different approach. And then obviously, if it's uh, taking too long, maybe you should skip the question and try ones that come after it later. I usually try to skip about two minutes into a problem if I don't know what I'm doing yet. Okay, but I got to this point before then. So if this distance here is also x, because this part of the directrix is also a distance to the vertex, which is on the parabola, this distance will be x. And since this distance is 20, this part right here above the x-axis is 20 minus x. But now I've got two variables, c and 20 minus x. Well, what am I going to do? Well, we better look for something else to capitalize on. If I've got this here, why don't I go this way over to the y-axis, and now I've got another distance, and I know that this distance here is 20 minus x, while the whole distance is x. And since that's happening, what would be the part up here? Don't do it in your head. Don't risk that. It's x minus 20 minus x. Doing it in your head is a good chance to forget that this is a double negative turning it positive and not writing this correctly as 2x minus 20. In fact, there's probably even a trap answer that takes that into account. So just go ahead and write it. It takes a couple seconds, right? Okay, so then you've got this going on here. We've got another distance of c because this distance is the same as this distance. It's a rectangle. And because we've got right triangles, you've got your old friend Pythagorean. Um, so you're going to have c squared plus, we'll do the bottom one first, 20 minus x squared is going to equal, this is the hypotenuse, 21 squared, which is 441. And the other one is c squared, this is the top one now, c squared plus 2x minus 20 squared is equal to 400, the square of 20. And you've got two equations, and you've got two unknowns, which means you have a solvable system if there's any solution to be found. Zero doesn't appear on here, so there must be some solutions. Go ahead and take this one and just subtract. That's how you make things you don't want go away, you subtract them. So we're gonna subtract this, subtract that, you're going to get 41. Um, I'm going to expand this. It's 400 minus 40x plus x squared minus, and then this is going to be this expression expanded, which is 4x squared. The product times 2 is negative 80x plus 400. Okay, so my 400 and 400 are going to cancel because that's a minus sign out front, right? My negative 40x minus a negative 80x is positive 40x. 
my x squared minus 4x squared is negative 3x squared equals 41. Nobody likes a negative x squared term, so let's move it to the other side. Zero is going to equal 3x squared minus 40x plus 41. And what's this? The quadratic that we anticipated at the beginning of the problem, which means we immediately snap into Vieta's the sum of the roots is negative this coefficient, the second co the linear terms coefficient, the negative that over this 40 over 3, answer choice B, walk it back to the basics. Think, don't, don't overcomplicate things. What is the definition of a parabola? You have to ask yourself those kinds of questions on the test and then calmly tell yourself what the answer to that question is. Right, so don't be afraid to ask yourself questions, right? Don't just assume you're gonna know everything. Start asking, why are they calling it a focus? Why is there, so that you can think of the definition of a parabola as it pertains to conic sections. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will see you in the next one whenever I have time to film. I am gonna try to get to a video tonight or tomorrow that discusses the cutoff and what's going on with the percentages and stuff like that. Uh, it's all gonna be kind of theory a little bit, but we'll talk about the possibilities of what's really going on there. See you guys in the next video.